This is Off Planet Radio. Three, two, one. Hey everybody, welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV as it is tonight. And um, we're going to stand to a bit of a controversy, as they like to say in the British Isles. Because Randy likes to put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. <laughs> the emphasis. <laughs> because we do have this conversation that just ensues every year that, as we begin to roll out this coming season of appearances and events. And um, I've talked about this almost like forever. And it appears as though every year I will talk about it again, but it has a lot to do with what goes on with these conference events. And the leading darlings of alternative media, which this is not any kind of personal attack on people or a vendetta, um, it is what it is. But I think the way we're going to go at this tonight will make great sense in terms of bringing some balance to some conversations that have been out there on the horizon for a long time. In terms of what is being fed to people in mass events, what the staging of these events are, and also the questionable practices and integrity at times of certain preventers, presenters at certain conferences. Yeah, you can call them preventers. Preventers is Prevent probably close. <laughs> <laughs> preventers was... might be closer to the truth. Yeah, my, my semantics are getting stilted it again. So, it's like, the best thing to do is just laugh our way into this. Oh and my who gosh. better to do that than Emily Moyer? <laughs> yeah, so here we are, guys. And um, uh, we have just finished solving the Mandela effect that exists behind Randy's head. And uh, we just finished unwinding Sonia's 13th strand of DNA. So we are here to present you with part six of the human game. Uh, uh, we're part six bullshit, too. right? Yeah. <laughs> we're going to oh um, uncork oh. the, this, uh, the recent God. round of contact in the desert craziness. And uh, I, you know, I think it was, uh, we're here with Sonia tonight who, um, was probably very surprising that she, in some little weird way, got caught up in the contact in the craziness desert for a much different reason than most people get caught up in it, simply just because she didn't know what it was, <laughs> which I kind of love. So we're going to kind of talk, let her kind of explain to us what happened and then get into the nitty gritty and the media of why, like, what matters is actually probably the opposite of what they talk about at these conferences. And uh, then later in the patrons hour, we're going to talk about her new article, which kind of goes along nicely with this topic. So, Sonia, with your newly unraveled 13th strand of DNA, <laughs> welcome, once, welcome once more to Off Planet Radio. Oh, my gosh. Uh, thank you. I'm not, not sure where to go with that kind of welcome. <laughs> so much is expected when you have that many strands unraveled oh in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, John Lennon did instant karma. We do instant ascension. Oh, no, I love it. I love it. Yeah, there you wow. go. Just is it, water. Is, I was just going to say, is it, it just like add water, water and stir? Yeah. <laughs> just add water and stir. Oh my yeah. gosh. People understand what we're talking you know, but about. But that actually is kind of <laughs> what this all feels like. Yeah. It, at times. Yeah. Add water. It, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think a few weeks ago, I put something on pay Facebook, which is usually sometimes my random thoughts that I just kind of thumbtack onto my wall. And it was that <clears throat> if you're thinking in 5D, you've already limited your ascension. And really, isn't that what this is about? I mean, we have this textbook syllabus of things that we're supposed to oh, there he is with the emphasis again <laughs> there it no it's a syllabus <laughs> oh, am i gonna need my dictionary <laughs> oh gosh yeah yeah you know um i don't even know what word to begin but uh, you know it's the second strand <laughs> on the right 
<laughs> I, I think you're right. You know, what is funny is, no, I, I, I really didn't know. I'm just sort of smurf met, sir, smurfetting, smurfetting through la, 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 la. That's kind of what was happening. And then, um, and then I kind of realized some things. Okay, let me, let me start, start from at the, very, the beginning. very beginning. Okay, so for a few years, I, I had backed away from going to conferences. So I, I wasn't doing conferences for, I don't know, several years. And I think maybe the last thing must have been Conspiracy Con, um, which I used to do. And Conspiracy Con used to be like pretty much one of the biggest. It was a well-respected conference. It had a lot that that went on a lot of variety of people um and and i got to see more behind the scenes of these conferences not just that conference but other conferences uh the people that were presenting um th there was just for me there were so many questions as to what they were delivering and their actual behavior um and it it, it was it was all of that and things that i'd overhear and so for me, for a while, I just thought, you know, I don't know if I want to be part of this anymore. I don't care if it's business. That's kind of where I was. I, I, I don't really care. I'm just, I'm just going to step away. So basically, so I did um, from other conferences as well. So it wasn't just one conference. It was just like all of them. You, stopped doing them. you just stopped doing them. I, I just right? stopped doing them. And, and then I would look at the people that were presenting and it, it would just how should i say it, i don't know everything always would just seem so packaged to me um it just seemed like it was like the just the, the same old sort of whatever it is packaged concepts the people that would attend not all the people now let me let me say this i'm not saying everybody was doing this. I'm not saying and maybe one or two people that that weren't, but the people that would come, <laughs> one, or one or two people, but the people that would come, a lot of those people, they tend to show up because this is like a um, a, a, a an amusement park, um, you know, just kind of going to the haunted house. They want to be scared. It's the roller coaster ride. They they loved here you know what's go what's going on with them who's doing what to them um all the, a lot of the fear stuff they they human beings thrive off of this stuff and um and so i saw it was it was a lot of that so maybe you had maybe uh less people that maybe technically would come to see my stuff although we'd have people that go you know we came all the way just to hear what you were talking about but it would be a lot of these people and what i saw with that is that they a lot of these people weren't necessarily wanting any solutions they just kind of wanted to hear about the excitement of whatever was being presented and many of the presenters depending on the conference um and you know contact in the desert again not to just isolate just make it just them but many of the people they come with with information and content that sort of take people a lot of times into this this i'm gonna say fantasy space this this space and they just people just end up eating it up and then they love it and for me it was like okay, well, uh, I can't do that, and I don't want to do that, and I don't want to be part of that. A lot of my work is very kind of in your face, as you well know. There's not much cushion on it. There is no angels <laughs> and guides no and <laughs> gurus. There is there is no city of lights. There, you know, There's just not a lot of that that's going on. Um, and so, and people love a lot of that other stuff. Um, and so that was, again, those were my reasons to go, okay, I got to step away and I step back. So now I said to myself last year, um, cause last year I did do a couple of conferences, but the year, I think the earlier, earlier part of last year, year before that, I go, okay, all right, you've had time away. Cause I've even, I even did that with workshops where I'm like, you know what? It doesn't matter about making money, whatever. I'm not doing any workshops. I'm, wor I'm going through my own growth process. 
Um, so I just stepped away. I, I have my times where I'll step away from things. I don't let money be the guiding force as to what I'm going to do and engage in. So I said, okay, you're going to start, you just get out there. You can do your thing. Just you do your talking, whatever it is you want to do um, at the conference, uh, whatever conference. So I was, it was more open last year and I was fine with the conferences I did last year. They were fine. Uh, and then this year, um, honestly, I, I was very open. I wanted to do contact in the desert. I don't think I really thought about it um, a great deal. I did want to do it, but I think I simply wanted to do it because I had said, you got to just like get over it. Just go and do it, you know, go out there. Um, and so, yes, the, the more that I would, I saw it, 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 of the people, the more I realized that how much I felt like a misfit um, in terms of, you know, what I was coming with. And the fact that obviously contact in the desert is really about um, contact in the desert. It's really about uh, people's UFO experiences, abductions, uh, everything that really is UFO related. And it's, really, and it's, I, it's mostly really about the blue chicken cult, right? The bluebirds. That's like the, the bluebirds. Yeah. yeah. So it, 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 it is totally about that. And that was made clear to me. And I was, you know, I was hesitant. Um, I was like, okay, well, maybe, maybe, okay, maybe I can do this. And as I started to get involved, I, I, I was, you know, I was told that, you know, yeah, I needed to shape my description to somehow be a little bit more um, engaging of, since it's the um, UFO conference. And so that's, that's where I started to kind of realize, I'm like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And then, um, and then, yeah, and then eventually, yeah, then, then I think you, was it you, yeah, we you asked shop. me, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't know, like, mm -hmm. I didn't know, like, all this controversy, I, I really didn't know, I didn't know all of that, um, now, did I step away because of the controversy around it, I can't really say that that was completely the reason why, but what I do know is that the people who, um, know my work and maybe understand know about the controversy may wonder well why is Sonia there well I wouldn't have known if I, I honestly if I if I'm speaking there I would have been a complete innocent um the, but it was like okay well these people are on a list you know if you are they're an agent you're that whoa 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 so <laughs> let me let me let me bust in here for a second most of this evolved around my Facebook posts of mm, 10 days ago, which was casually put out under the heading um, Shill Fest. And it had to do with the headline that um, said, Contact in, what was it? Contact in the Desert, the best UFO conference since Woodstock or something like The Woodstock of UFO conferences is how it was termed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I'm thinking, hmm, Woodstock. That was that was a psyop. That was that's been proven over the years, by the way, to have been part of the tests that they were doing by the CIA for you know acid testing large crowds and doing mind control triggers. <laughs> Not exactly a good thing. What I didn't know was that Sonia Barrett's name was on this on this <laughs> on the list. list. The that's how it sounds. So, so I didn't know Sonia was more on the list. <laughs> this comes into the controversy right away because <laughs> All of a sudden, people are going, but, 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 Sonia Barrett's on the list. And I'm going, oh, didn't see that. Uh, and... Yeah, I didn't. I had no idea. I, I'm just, again, I'm just doing my la, 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 you know. <laughs> well, I mean, Everybody remembers what, Smurfette. What was so interesting to me is because how this, any of this came about was I was at your day, your day, day workshop that was about, what, five weeks ago now or something like right, that. Right, right. So, and you just offhandedly in, in, during some point in the afternoon mentioned that you were thinking about doing it. And I looked at you like you were crazy, right? I looked at you like you were crazy. And I was like, uh, so yeah, I don't know if you want to do that. And she was like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't care. I'm just going to go do my thing that I always do. Cause that's what you do. You don't hit, you, you are not in all the drama. So she's no. like, I'm going to do my thing. And I was like, okay, you know what? My, my thought was, and I think we even, this even came up in our, in our Patreon group, right? Because 
Is that, I even yeah, said too. something about it. I was like, you know, Sonia's thinking about doing it. And I was like, well, the interesting part is that, oh, I have something interesting to say about this. I didn't see that poster. Put that back, Randy. Uh, oh, we'll that back. So the, I, I said, well, if there's one person that could go there and really just cut through all the nonsense and not be affected by it, it would be Sonia. Um, she could probably get up there and just actually call the whole thing out without even intending to do that. Like she wouldn't go there with right. the intention of calling it out, but by what she said, it would just call out all the rest of the bullshit. But then I also thought about like, she just, her level of, your level of integrity and what you care about is so out of sync with everyone there that like, it's one of those hard things. Like, do you go and just not be affected by it? Or do you want to put yourself into something like that? So that was it. I was like, you know, so a big girl, she'll figure it out, you know? And then I was out of town and didn't know about all this stuff going on. And then you called me and you're like, oh my God, I didn't realize. But I just have to say this as I look at this there, Contact in the Desert used to be in Joshua Tree. Now it's in Indian Wells. Anyone else know what else is in Indian Wells? What other mind control festivals there? Coachella. Oh, Coachella. Yeah. Coachella is there. Yeah. They used to have enormous, yeah. I, I, the biggest, one of the biggest raves that ever happened in the United States was there. Like I went to a party mm -hmm. there that had like 50,000 people. Um, mm -hmm. So the Coachella festival is there, Indian Wells tennis tournament. Mm -hmm. People who've listened to me will understand that that also was a mind control event, right? There's, you know, the kind of stuff that goes on there. It's owned by Larry, Larry uh, Ellison, who owns Oracle, which is predictive mm -hmm. software technology. That mm -hmm. whole area is kind of owned by those people. So I didn't realize it was in Indian Wells. That puts a whole other special spin on it. See, yeah, yeah and I, I wasn't even thinking all that. I didn't, I didn't know mm -hmm. any of that. Um, my, my thing is I'm always just coming from the place of me and what I want to do. Um, and I think the reason why I do that is, regardless of whatever mind control, whatever, uh, that stuff, I, I'm, I'm like, it's so off limit in my zone, in my space, that um that that doesn't even like it doesn't phase me and it doesn't concern me at all if i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do it but i think there are those moments where i just have i follow my feelings and i and i just felt like uh i was i like i told them i said i i don't think i'm a fit i'm i'm not a fit for um for this conference and that's not the first conference i've just backed away from i've just said okay i i'm not going to do this conference um, but I think that people do go there with the intent, vulnerable, they go there vulnerable. Why are they vulnerable? Because a lot of people are so disconnected from themselves or from, sure. from really making their own inner connection that they just, they go there to be fed. They go there to be fed information. It's a lot like a church. Yeah, it is. They, they go there for that kind of, kind of feeding. Is run by Jimmy Church now? <laughs> <laughs> the high priest. Right? I mean, so it's, I didn't, and these people, that's why when people, I'm always asked, oh, do you know such and such? No, I don't. I know I don't. I, I don't know any of these people. And a lot of times I don't know them because the way, the way my, antenna and everything works is that um i don't even have to talk to you to for to not have that person in my field i just have no interest i don't check i don't know what they talk about i'm completely uninterested um and that's kind of how I, and that not because i dislike you or anything we there's just no resonance and I, and I don't feel that, so I just don't even bother to engage. That's really how I operate. Mm -hmm. And it keeps me walking always smoothly through the field. I'm never worried about, you know, psychic attacks. or and It's like all this stuff is just the furthest thing from my mind. Why is that? Because I understand that as we are able to shift um, our understanding in such a way, uh, understanding away from all of these um, stories and experiences. Now, I'm not saying that these aren't valid experiences because everything happens and everything is a possibility. I think it's just a matter of a person deciding what kind of stories do they want to get involved in? What kind of distraction do you want to be a part of? And for me, it's like as more you, you step into greater levels of, of understanding and knowledge, it start, the frequency at which you're operating with this zone, it changes. So you are not you know, it, that kind of stuff becomes so minuscule to me. It, that's really basically how I say it. And it doesn't mean that I'm saying I'm better or, or worse. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying those frequencies are just, they just don't resonate with me. And I am allowing of 
of people who are operating in that space to do that. Real quickly, I, um, there was a conference I went to a few years back. And this is a lady that she's at many of these UFO conferences. Um, and I happened to be there this particular, it wasn't really a UFO conference, but it was. Um, and she did a talk. Now understand this. I am typically, I am never in anybody's talk. I wait in the hotel and until it's time for me to talk. Why do I do that? Not because I, what I think is better, but because I never want to be, I never, I don't want that in my mind. I don't want to be af affected in any way because when I come, I'm coming and whatever is gonna, it's gonna be organic. Um, and I don't want any filtering, uh, my uh, filtering system based on anything all five people before me have said. So this is why I do that. So I have no idea. So I just kind of go. Now I did my talk and, and, and again, it was one of those moments where I go, okay, Sonia, you always disappear. You never stay for anybody's stuff. So I'm going to stay and listen to a little bit of this. And this person was talking about the reptilians and um, how wonderful and, you know, from talking to other women, what great lovers the reptilians are. <laughs> and I was just like, I, I was actually just like, know who this person is. I bet you, know. you do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and I, I, don't. Was, I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, what? I'm like, okay, so this is the reason why I stay in my room. <laughs> That's yeah. how I felt. And I was like, seriously, don't we have enough people right here, right now to make love with? Why, why do we need to go get a freaking <laughs> reptilian? <laughs> why? Have you gone through everyone here on the planet already? But it's, you know, but people feed into all of that. They feed into it and they love that kind of stuff. And the, I, the fact is, you you got to you got to step up into your own awareness and understanding you know we can talk about that more uh later on as we go along but this is what this is about this is about rising to a more expansive part of yourself you can stay in the stories if you want to to what end people people die people leave the planet all the time okay so how have those stories served them this is what i'm saying to myself all the time Okay, so this person was talking about all this stuff, and then they're gone. Now, now what? So, so, so you just yeah. have this, the leftover stories. So what's interesting to me is that it, as I've gotten to know you, I found out that it, I find it fascinating. That you can, I find out that you're really crazy. Yeah, well, I already know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, right, but uh, you know, I was surprised at how many UFO conferences you've spoken at. Like, it's to me, it was like. What you, have, what you say has nothing to do with that. That's why I'm usually invited, typically, though. That's why conspiracy to balance the, the, Yeah, the, that's usually why I'm invited. It, well, what's interesting, is, interesting to me is, so I asked you maybe the first time that you and I had lunch together, I was like, dude, I was like, why are you invited? I, I was like, have you been abducted? You're, and you just very casually said, well, I have the memory of arriving here in a UFO, but other than that, no, nothing really. <laughs> <laughs> when you told me about arriving in the field and stepping out in this UFO from the future, and it sounded very familiar to me because it's kind of similar to how I think I arrived here. So I was like, okay. So it's not something you talk about. You just accept that this is a part of reality and you've moved on to other stuff. But what, so it's fascinating. So I was like, well, that's interesting. But if you really, really think about it, mm -hmm. like, these people who go to the UFO conferences who are all caught up in like the aliens and what the ship looked like and what the aliens did to them and how they're in control. Truthfully, if you want to understand how all of that stuff works, your information is the answer to it in a lot of ways. Mm. But it is right, the story. exactly. And so, that's so it. for the very advanced person who understands how metaphysics and geometry and all of this kind of stuff play into, uh, you know, transdimensional experiences and things like that, yeah, it makes sense. But that's not what these people are there for. But the part that I find interesting is all these, most of these people on the UFO circuit, there's some people on the UFO circuit who've been on it since it started in the 70s, 80s or 90s. Yep. They still go around and they're still telling the same story. The they're same. so stuck in the story that they rely on just telling their story over and over and over again to make a living. They haven't to pay rent. <laughs> they, 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 haven't exact, they haven't 
They haven't gotten any more answers as to what happened to them. They haven't come up with a new story. Like, like they haven't moved on at all. Like no. their, their consciousness stopped expanding at the moment that they either had that experience or think they had that experience and they're stuck. Well, that experience sure. sells. So why would yeah. you want to leave that space? It's paying the bills. Well, um, yeah. This is also induced trauma. Yeah. I, I did a conference in Houston in 2017. I was the basically the moderator for the conference and did some roundtables while I was there. And one of them we did with a panel on abduction, which included two very high profile investigators and several abductees, including probably one of, if not the best known abductee in modern ufology who's had a film made that entire experience for me felt like an aa meeting <laughs> <laughs> and i have to tell you that i got to the point where i, I began to recognize my role was largely as a therapist and it was like we passed the wand <laughs> And unfortunately, it's a horrible thing to say, but it, it had nothing to do with anything except voyeurism on a psych psychological level. Mm -hmm. There was no useful information because I can go pretty far with the woo on the subject because I've had my experiences. Right, right. And I know what I think I know, and I'm mm -hmm. good with that. Right. And I have to tell you that after a while, I had the sense that this story has been canned, the air sucked out of it, <laughs> and basically it's been shoved down the conveyor belt at the supermarket a few too many times. The expiration date is like... Are we talking next. spam? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, salty meat, that's it. That, and you're right, you're absolutely right, um, Randy. Um, I'm glad you said that because this is not about, the things that you're saying, what, what I'm saying, it, this is not about saying none of that is um, exists and none of it has happened and you haven't been abducted and uh, that's not it. It's like no, okay, it's so now what? All. Right. So so it's like okay, so that happened. Now what? That now what? You know, and that is the part that that people seem to be stuck at. Okay, so how do aren't we supposed to uh, expand now from that? Do we? become a uh, grander or do you continue to worship anything that is that comes from out appears to come from outside of our uh, our planet or or uh, familiar reality and worship is exactly and worship yeah. it yeah, yeah and, and and make it greater than than you and then be a victim to it and how long does that go on this is my argument which is why it's not an argument which is why I don't even talk about it because I'm um, that that to me is now is minuscule. We are in a time, which is why once again, you, I keep talking about this expansion in technology as opposed to the fear of it. Because when you go to these conferences, people are pushing that, what's gonna happen, all of that. Okay, so at what point do you think that the human race has an opportunity to go, you know, go beyond all of that? And this time, is a time that is open for that. A whole bunch of people aren't going to, obviously, but the energy of this time, because you're seeing the rise in the level of technology that we have, is a clear indication that there is a, um, gra um, a, a, a default then, default upgrade. There is an upgrade happening, an upgrade opportunity. Let me be clear about that. So it doesn't fall into this new age, you know, we're all going to ascend. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying that there is an, a default upgrade that is happening. And, and that meaning that the, the system or the construct, the, the um, simulation goes through cycles. And those cycles, after so many cycles, click another upgrade more cycles click another upgrade we're in one of those click right now and and some will be upgraded and then some some won't you know, people just leave the planet people just get off the ride after a certain point are you saying that ascension is an individual matter <laughs> you're telling me 
that a group of people will <laughs> not ascend together. together are I'm, I know it's this. so but upsetting. I, I think part of the way they sell contact is the debt. And the, it wasn't there. There was even I think there was this conference last year with some of these same people, or the year before, called like ascend together or ascend. Is, oh. Wasn't there something called that, Randy? Is that Heaven's Gate? <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. I mean. <laughs> You know, castrate thyself and wait for the gods to come. I, it's, yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it, you know, and people, because people, again, they're vulnerable, they're desperate, um, they're also lazy. Let me throw that in. Yes, yes yeah, for anybody out there who is offended, I'm sorry, but lazy, because let me tell you, this journey to really dig in and to really allow yourself to release those yep. old programs and old beliefs, it is work and it is tiring. But then the alternative is to um, uh, remain in, in what somebody else's uh, grasp and to remain dumbed down. Uh, to what end? To what end? There is a much bigger picture here, the much bigger opportunity for this technology, the technology of the body, the technology of this whole construct. And you can decide to be a part of that kind of upgrade. So you're upgrading yourself. You're allowing yourself to upgrade. You are giving yourself permission for this upgrade. Most people don't get it. So they're not. So they rely on these people to tell them, oh, yeah, you know, um, UFOs, oh, uh, everything that we've seen, they've been visiting the planet. Okay, to what end? We know that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At this point, we know that. There's all kinds of visitors everywhere. It's a big old unlimited existence with pockets in time that yeah, you, Earth is a motel about. six in the back <laughs> end of the universe right now. I mean, it's a through yeah. line. You know, truck stop it, Motel Six, right? The back side of the truck, truck, truck stop Motel Six with a the next, with a, the next subdivision is ready to be put in right now. That's right. It, it's and, an amusement park. It's I mean, it, it's it's everything. It's exciting to come here. Um, and some people come here yeah. just to be dumb, dumb down. Humans are fun. Earth girls are easy. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> But that's what, you know, that's, that's what people, some people come here for. They're like, eh, don't wake me up. Eh, I just want to, I just want to enjoy this right now. I don't want to hear anything that involves me doing work on myself to yeah. any great degree. Yeah. No, she, I, and I actually appreciate the people who are honest about that. Like I've had people telling me like, you know, people that tell me I'm wrong, I'm crazy, blah, blah, blah. Like that shit's annoying. But there's people who are like, Emily, you know what? You're probably right. I just don't want to hear about it because it's too much for me. So you do your thing and I'm going to just eat potato chips and watch the game and drink beer and, and, you know, have a happy life. And if that's all they were doing, that would be one thing. But what, what they don't realize is that they are completely immersed in the experience, in, yeah. in the yeah. whole thing. So it's yeah. not just watching. They're not observers. They're participants. Yeah. They think they're observing, but how yes. could you observe? How can you, cl um, have clarity how can you see if you're in it it's like you know the whole forest for the trees idea i mean you 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 can't really see which is why what you're saying to them makes no sense because they can't really see their sensory yeah. system is completely hooked up to this um this prescribed uh, uh reality this prescribed version and that mm -hmm. word version is very important i use it many times do not take it lightly when I say a version, because that's what we always have is a version of reality. And if I use the word version, that means that there are a bunch of other versions, meaning that there are a bunch of other potentialities of what uh, reality could look like. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really important for people to wrap their minds around. And the idea of um, our alien brothers and sisters and all, you know, all of that in the cosmos, and I've said it on this show, what if, what if, I'm saying what if, but I know otherwise, but what if that is still all just within one gigantic matrix, one gigantic mm -hmm. simulation, because it is. It is. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> it, it's all in one gigantic simulation. So, so it, as long as you're so stuck with that, you never really leave because all your science, all the, the scientific 
analysis and, and, and concepts and uh, interpretations about what UFOs are or what, you know, what, whatever, the distance between here and there. It's, it's all, you're, you're all, it's all under the same of this simulation. What if beyond that, there's something that you haven't even thought of because everybody is so caught up in the simulation, in the little simulation of Earth and then the simulation of the universe and whatever this, the, the simulation that the universe is in because there's a whole bunch of them. It's just, it's just one system after another. It's just a bunch, a series of systems and we are wired we connect with them when we come in that's why we have these bodies we've got to have these bodies because you have to have a technology that hooks you up to whatever system that you're going to be part of it's that simple yeah. uh your it's brain exactly is an is. interface exactly yeah. and, and you're wired up to it and um and you just keep remaining in that wiring and when you're in that wiring you are a, you are hooked like somebody's got you on heroin or something. You, we, we are addicted to the version of reality that, that, is, that we keep running. But that's what, that's what happens at these events. This is, this is confirmation of this physicality that we're doing. So we have this reality and we project it onto the screen collectively and we intersperse our neurons and all our thought processes. And at the same time, we're all doing confirmation bias examining our evidence and seeing over here what lines up with this and it's such an amalgam of realities and then you have then you have oh god forbid the the, the speaker's symposium at the front of the stage with the round table and the very earnest looking men with the beards <laughs> that rub their chins and go like this and go you have to be see what your evidence is and <laughs> He's playing off of the woo-woo guy at the end that's got the spinner cap on. And the spinner guy is going, but it's true, I really can travel on light photons with the secret space program. And after all, you just go, okay. But I can sit here and I can tell you that the distance between you and the next universe is one ten thousandth of a micron. And there's a pocket universe right beside my ear. All true. It's true. It's just, it's true. that's all it is. It's just pockets of, um, of what we call time. But, you know, they're, they're just... So, but I'll just try always say, and it, you know, we've said this many times here, but I think I coined it. The secret is that there's no space. It's just a program. Everything is just a yeah. Program. Yeah. 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 And you, and you, and you get to, space. yeah, you get to keep enjoying it. You get to keep doing it. But like every game, which I keep saying that, like every game, which is why we play games, why we have right. games, it comes from the bigger game, this big game. That's how we create games, right? At some point, the object of every game is to either beat the game or find find the way out of the game into something else. This is the whole thing. This game, it's like... It keeps looping you in, looping you in, and everything around you keeps helping you to keep looping in, looping in. But honestly, but there is an out, and it's not an escape. I'm, I'm always trying to be clear on that. We're not going anywhere, it's, folks. It's, it's not about trying to escape the game. It is about getting that aha uh -huh and go, oh, realizing how you're hooked up and realizing the object of this game is for you to make that realization and then start um, going beyond that, the, that construct of the game. Stop going beyond it. And that's why I throw in, because the, the Bible has all kinds of interesting mm -hmm. information. It, it, it confuses you and, and it throws in truth and all and mixes it all up. But that's why that one statement that, um, um, that says that the last victor to be conquered is death. I keep emphasizing that because nobody realizes that that is the ultimate out. You don't get that. So everything, everybody at the conferences, they all just loop everybody back into the same system and everybody just keeps coming back around in the same, same damn loop. Even if they leave here and they go, okay, well, yeah, I know that we're, you know, we die and I'm going to go wherever to another dimension. Even the people that are dead, are still around part of the simulation another another dimension of the simulation because dimensions within our little construct our little simulation they're still around 
do, I mean, try what? Do they come back in? You've got to understand that that is the ultimate is to figure out how this technology works and take back own control or, or um, of the of the control system. She's saying you don't have to die, folks, and not dying is the only sort of it's not an escape, but not dying is the out. It's the beating the it's the beating, beating this the version of, of the game, yeah. this version, and that includes all your UFO stuff. It includes all that stuff. It's all one massive simulation of experiences um, of all of this stuff. It's just all all that. And so, yeah, the ultimate is 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 that because do you just stop playing a game? People say, oh, okay, well, I go to heaven. And, well, what's that? That's all part of the simulation too. So, do we then just move into a completely different um, potentiality? That's all. What, what that looks like, I don't know. Is it, is it, is it what, a reality? Well, a reality of air, you know, is, is probably still part of it because all of our gases are all of our gases and our laws are completely related to this simulation. Mm -hmm. Gravity, I mean, everything. It's all related to, you know, to all of this. So we have to, we might not know what that looks like, in moving beyond this, but we need to at least own the fact that, ah, there is a more that is truly beyond these concepts that I have been hanging on to. Great, yeah. I mean, we're basically talking about commandeering spiritual technologies, mm -hmm. which you can't do with the established laws of physics in this realm that does not scale. We sort of know that from quantum, that quantum is still too abstract. But what we do know is the experiences of people who have done different ex near-death experiences, out-of-body right. experiences. Mm -hmm. um, anything that takes the mind and relocates, bilocates, trilocates, whatever. Mm -hmm. An extra sensual extension of our beingness shows us that there is another aspect to our, our living that doesn't have anything to do with the laws of physicality, that the laws of physicality are sort of the bars on the cage. Yeah, and that's so, a new total well, illusion. We, we mm -hmm. worship to that altar God, that God of physics and science, and even, you know, all of the special theories and exclusions to that in order to get to the place where we can go to another level, but at the same time, we're, we're still moving within the matrix realm. Yeah, we're still moving within there. And, and it's not to disqualify, and here's, here's the trick. This is not about disliking the game. This is, as a matter of fact, that just loops you in more. It's mm -hmm. the appreciation for the game. It is the realization, it's that understanding, it's the, ah, you. I always say you basically fall in love with the game because it's, it's, it's how you get out because the game is based on dislike. It is based on opposition. It, it, is, a, it is a polarized game. Every, it, all of that just loops you back in. You, you end up having to be a, a neutral, uh, basically, and you, you can only be neutral when you come to that understanding and realization that the game isn't out to get you. <laughs> it really isn't. The game is what it is until you figure out otherwise. And the game keeps handing us more stuff that seem like it's putting pressure on us, but everything that happens in the game is really just pushing us to go beyond it. It doesn't seem like it, but when you start to get it, you're like, oh, heck, we set this mess up so that if we didn't have anything to, for propulsion, if we had nothing to drive us, um, beyond or to it what what would that be what would that look like we would all be the same there would be no reason to even be here um mm -hmm. it, it, what would that look like if everybody was the same and oh we're just gonna be happy all day we're gonna we're gonna just you know what is they drink eat honey or whatever and drink milk all day or land whatever those honey, yeah land of milk and honey and just all of that no everything that happens here make no mistake it happens for a reason and how do we know that it's supposed to happen because again everything is allowed 
everything is allowed. It doesn't matter if you say, oh, it's, this wasn't supposed to happen. And I used to hear people say that in a lot of the new age movement. You know, we, we, we weren't supposed to, we were supposed to come here. There's always some neat packaged idea, yeah, you know. Yeah. This, this wasn't, this wasn't supposed, supposed to happen. happen. We're supposed to come here and just yeah. be in peace and love with one another. Um, and then all of this happened, but it wasn't supposed to. Human beings have gone too far. No, how can you say again, the rules of the game are there, there are, are no, no rules. rules. Of the game. I've said that many times. Yeah. That's the rules. There's no rules, and then you have to figure out that there are no rules. That's, that's the whole thing. Is that people like people have fallen under this idea that just because somebody in authority has said you can't do something, that that means you can't do it. You know, when those that class of people who like to tell people they can't do shit, they do whatever the hell they want. Right, like, right, like, right. But you know, yesterday yeah. about you know Bill Gates releasing some more of his you know, uh, mosquito, mosquitoes, you know, you know, <laughs> mosquitoes that are going to kill all the natural mosquitoes, right? I'm 100% sure he's not asking permission before he does that. He just does it, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's the whole thing. People like, are so used to asking permission for everything or having a license to do stuff or, or filing paperwork. Uh, even, even Sonia here fell victim to the, you got to file paperwork shit for a while, right? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I was in the sovereign. I've talked about that. I, yeah. I did that. I went down that journey and uh, I'm happy I did because I, it, you know what? It's all part of it. This is the you thing. You have to go through it. The, yeah. The key is to realize that it's all part of it. Now, if you decide to just stay stuck there, but everything is a stepping stone. If you realize that everything is taking you yet steps higher. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened for me. It's like, oh, wow. I understand how this, this, this minuscule level of the matrix works. Our Very world small. Works. Yeah. Yes. I understand how the supposed laws within it are put together and why it's put together and how and all of that stuff. I get that. Okay. Now I need to be bigger than the laws. Okay. Yeah. But with, 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 without needing to now get the system to um, to acknowledge my stuff and tell me and, and then agree because all they do is put you on another list. Yeah. It, it's the truth. You know, you, you, you never escape the system like that. It mm -hmm. just, it's just a bunch of lists and you get on this other list. Yeah, and I did this too. You know, the useful part of it is at some point you come to recognize the spiritual aspect yes. of this. If you don't, mm -hmm. you wind up in court all the time <laughs> and you wind up in prison. As many of these people found out, they wound up in prison. In prison I'm not unsympathetic to them. Yeah, I get it. I but get I have it. to say that their law couldn't save them because law ultimately is just a matter of venue and jurisdiction and whatever court you wind up in, the judge has different robes. And most yeah. people don't recognize this. That's the, and the, yeah. it's the, the, the external, I was going to say eternal, external mm -hmm. savior programs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it's, once again, something else, someone else mm -hmm. is going to come file the paper, right kind of paperwork and the right judge paper. just acknowledges it. If I, I just I, get that man Damus writ on him, by God, he'll dry up and <laughs> blow away. I, like, I was kind of into it, looking into it hardcore for a while. And then when I got to the point where I was trying to understand parse syntax grammar, I was like, enough. <laughs> oh, no, it's it's deep. Oh, no, yeah. that's a matrix. It, that That's this yeah. whole other little matrix in itself that you get lost in. And I used to go to common law court. I mean, I was really... I mean, I, I have a deep understanding about yeah. how this stuff works. And then one day I just go, what the hell? I just said, I go, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. What am I doing? I'm sitting, I had binders this thick. Oh, yeah. I walked into court one time with a binder and they looked at me and they went, oh, shit. But, but that, hey. But see, that's what makes but a lot of these people it. proud. They yeah. feel good. I got they, my binder. When they show you how much stuff, all these papers they've been filing yeah, yeah. for years. And not only are they filing these papers for years, but a lot of these people are falling apart. They yeah. are sick. A lot of the people that I would see at common law court I've got health problems. Yeah, I wasn't able to, you know, I had to go file my papers because I was in the hospital. 
Uh, they got arthritis. They got diabetes. Got Cancer, high blood I mean, pressure. Just... Like just, just look at this. So many of the people who end up in that system are people who fell on to some of the truth information of the conspiracy stuff and found out about mind control, maybe even had a few questions about themselves or UFO stuff. Mm -hmm. And they get themselves to this place where these are people that like maybe have the potential for magic, right? All people mm -hmm. do, but some people have seemed to have a little more access to it. And right. then they're so worried about the system getting them down. The system doesn't have to do shit. These people decide that they're going to go start filing paperwork. They give away all their magic and spend all their time worrying about parse syntax grammar. And they're, you know, they don't even have to have a handler uh, working on you anymore. You're handling yourself. You're spending all of your time in court, <laughs> right? You're, you've not even been arrested and you're in court like all the time. It, you're, you're handling yourself. <laughs> yeah. you, you haven't even been arrested, but you're happy to go to court every day. So that doesn't have to be jail because you're already in court every day. You might as well be in jail and at least you get three squares a day and yeah. you don't have to pay for parking. But this is how oh. this is how they're you know, to think of oh my gosh. To think of somebody with your magic and your brilliance, Sonia, worrying about that shit. You know, like that, whatever handler, whatever handler oh. has been, been put in charge of controlling you to make sure you don't ascend, he got a couple of years off while you were doing that because he knew exactly where you were going to be. Exactly. <laughs> so, I'm telling you, it's crazy. It's just hysterical, too, though. Just funny as hell. The lesson yeah. from all of this is that you can learn from it. And what yeah. you learn from it is that you use that knowledge and that process to mm -hmm. leapfrog to the next level, which is that you don't need that process anymore. Yes, right. that's experience. what the truth you movement want. is. Yes, when you look at the truth movement, what they call the truth movement, mm -hmm. it's stuck right now. It's stuck like a needle, hard dug into a groove at the end of a record, just going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the external save, savior programs, the authority programs are running. Mm -hmm. And the New Hope program mm -hmm. always runs, but the New Hope program is a loop of four years ago. I mean, we've watched this now. Yeah. And I'm sorry if I drop no other name in the show. Mr. Wilcock, you've been looping for five, <laughs> six, seven cycles it's, now. It's just, and people just love it. They cannot get enough of it. I am just amazed. I am just amazed. And some of the people, yes, the cockiness, the behavior, the um, righteous um, attitude, the all of that because of this being worshipped. And um, I, all you can do is just step back and go, okay, you know what? That's your game. I get it. And the people who are doing the you know, giving the person what they want, apparently that's something they need to experience as well. So I think this conversation mm -hmm. yep. serves those people who are on the verge of like really questioning what they're doing, you know, what am I doing, you know, uh, or are you doing this? I mean, and I think if the person has to step back and ask themselves that question, what what am I doing for, for myself, for my mm -hmm. reality? Uh, how lazy am I, you know? With my reality, we are so programmed to think that everything is out there. It's so far out there. We have to go out there to get it. When the truth of it is, like we were saying earlier, um, there, there, there really is no, no time. There really is no space. But according to how we are wired, because we're part of this reality, yes, this reality is about time uh, and, and space. And time and space is what? It's about distance. It is about a quantitative value. It's about measurement. It is about measuring from one point to the next. This is how we get time, is, is that idea of distance. And of course, that's where space comes in. It's a, mm -hmm. This allows us the opportunity to measure something. So therefore, mm -hmm. everything is always a distance away for us. It's mm -hmm. very hard for us to um, understand or conceive of the fact that what we, the, what we want to be or what we want to see with ourselves or that part we wanna uh, connect with with ourselves, there's no measurement to getting there. You can, you, you can just get there. Yeah, you, you know, know my, friend, my friend, Danny Katz, uh, I, don't, you, you, she, we, I do shows with her, you don't know her. Right, she's yeah, I, I know you've told me yeah, yeah, about it. She, I went to her manifestation workshop, you know, she's a language coach. Mm -hmm. I went to her mm -hmm. manifestation workshop and she asked me to, you know, she asked us all to like write down something, you know, mm. like that we really want and why we don't think we have. And I came up with this fascinating story about how I couldn't really have the thing that I wanted because 
I wasn't yet prepared for it. And I was working really hard right now to prepare for that. Right. And blah, 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 blah. And she was just like, I saw, I told her that. And she's like, that's just a story. Bullshit. You can have it now. Why don't you right. want it now? Just say you want it now. It'll happen now. Literally. Like I said, so I was like, okay, I'm just going to, I, I, I right. wasn't even taking it seriously. I said, okay, it can happen now. And literally it, it happened almost immediately after that. Right. Right. So right. Kind of like, you know, well, the game is about distance. The, da the game is about time. The game is about that spatical um, thing because this is the only way that we can get to have the kind of third dimensional experience that we've been having is we have to have this idea of time um, because of what it has allowed us um, to experience. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just really the bottom line of it until we, you know, like you were just saying, till we become aware of that when we realize then we can start moving into a completely different understanding and all that other stuff becomes very small and very minuscule. Are there um, forces or beings that are um, trying to control us and do all that stuff? Yes, but they're, they're only operating based on the people that have agreed to play um, the game because everything is, everything exists. Now you have to decide what story do I want to be part of? Are there, um, uh, what we talk about, you know, growing up in the church, of course, you know, I always heard about uh, demons and, you know, and, and all of those things. Um, every, everything exists. Everything is and isn't. Just, just potentialities. And what, according to what we understand, that is what allows us to not be part of certain um, kinds of experiences. And when you don't under, when you don't know that, and you go, yeah, I know what you're saying, but Whenever that big butt shows no up, butt. Yeah. you know, that means that you're, this is, this is the game that you, you know, you want to play. Anyway, there's more to it than that, but bottom line of it. And the other thing that I looked at, some, I started looking at um, some time back, and I think I mentioned it at that workshop that mm -hmm. I had done, um, Emily. And I started thinking, what is it that freaks us out so much about um, a scary movie a, um, a, a what we would call a horror flick, um, a, a, a weird looking face, a what looks supposedly looks like a, a, a demon if somebody shows that. And you really, really have to start thinking about that. What is the reference point in your mind? There is some sort of program that we mm -hmm. have about what we're supposed to fear and what uh, is acceptable in terms of our version of reality. And it has caused us to be constantly running from everything. That's why we don't like the dark. It's, it's too much unknown in the dark. And we're scared of things coming at us. So we are programmed to just to be afraid. Yeah, these are archetypal figures yeah. that have been programmed into us over time. They're basically into ancestral, us, into the game. ancestral memory. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And it's that realization. So I think I mentioned that. Yeah. So for me, I did, I, I did allow myself to just go, okay, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to watch this, whatever. I don't remember what it was, but on a couple of things, I'm like, I'm just going to look at it. I'm going to look. Um, because I needed my mind, my brain to realize that I am, I, I'm unaffected. This has absolutely no power over me other than yes if i really sunk into that program then yeah then i'm terrified and i could invite all kinds of stuff into my space everything needs permission and that's and what happens let me just point something out some of these conferences have seen manifestations of things there have been abductions mm. there have been men in black that have walked through the crowds yeah. And I don't doubt that at yeah. all. Yeah. And I can tell you. But people wanted to see that. That's part of it, why it's, it's, it's a, the level of fear yeah. and paranoia is highly amplified around these events. I mean, I had a horrible time in mm -hmm. Houston. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I couldn't have made up what happened. It's an environment. I mean, we were literally for it, abducted yeah. by, by an insane Uber driver <laughs> for six hours. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get better than that. Right? They, they don't come in worse. spaceships anymore. They come in Ubers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. There's, they're coming now the Uber. enemy shows the up in, as as a portal Uber. to another dimension, and they'll oh send someone for you. God, and take you to an Airbnb. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. 
or dump you at George W. Bush Airport in Houston. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm telling you, yeah. it's just, it's a lot floating around. It's a lot, but I'm telling you, it does rely on a lot of um, vulnerability. And yes, when the energy, the energy of the place, when that's what it is, because that's like Emily said, you know, people expect, they're hoping. Um, there's an expectation. And then there yeah. are a few people there that, yes, are very questionable. I will not mention them, but there's quite a few people that are, that are questionable in the sense of um, um, what, what they're who, involved who in. They, yeah, yeah, who they're working with, what, what, you know, all that stuff. Now, that's to say, let me clarify this. It's not to say that I will not do a UFO conference because I'm, I'm actually supposed to, I'm supposed to do um, the, uh, what is that, international... UFO Congress or okay. something like that. Yeah. 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 Um, it was just this one that gave you the extreme heebie-jeebies. This one, um, yeah, this one was just very, uh, it was just very interesting for me. Like, and okay, and part of that is was because when when anybody says, okay, talk, whatever you want to talk about, but when I, ha when I have to shape it to a particular way, you are. that becomes really like meh, difficult. Very like because I, I want to talk about what I want to talk about. I want I want to I want the freedom to do that. Um, that's where I'm, I'm coming. Surprised. From. I'm surprised. Like to me, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't even ever dream of asking you to a tell me ahead of time what you're going to talk about, or b could, to alter it for some you know special audience or need of mine. Like the point, you're if anyone is. If they've ever looked at your work, the point is, is that you say and do whatever you want, no matter how weird or crazy it sounds, end of story. <laughs> right, yeah, but- uh, Ms. Barrett, no. we require you to have at least 2.5% paranoia <laughs> and 4% fear into your speech. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, it was more to, um, to connect with the, because people were coming for this. They were coming for, for to for hear content. about- yeah, yes. for this. Um, and, and yes, and, and in all honesty, yes. You were going to turn around and tell them that they were their own, they had their own power and they could make all this happen. Right. And, and that was, be... that was known. That, that was known, but, yeah. the, but I had to, it was supposed to shape the description, but that was known that yes, I would get out there and the chances are, yes, I was going to talk about what I was going to talk about because um, I was not on board for, um, for that part of it. I'm not, I'm not on board for, encouraging people to remain in that state of ooh you know ooh oh oh my god i'm i'm, I'm so terrified i don't know if if i'm going to get abducted i'm not and you know i'm i'm like it's kind of like have you ever heard James McKenna <laughs> talk about when he goes on the DMT trip and he tells people not to get stuck in awe at the things you see because if you get stuck looking at all these incredible things you miss the the journey past them Right. It's kind of like that. Everybody's stuck looking, oh my God, they're aliens, right? Like they can't get past that part. And so well, yeah, the journey, the journey Usually beyond You're stuck that. inside your own glandular system. Right. That yeah. yeah. And right. that's the journey. I mean, and, and that's, and then to bring it back to the realization that we are not saying that this is, you're doing something right or doing something wrong. We're just simply pointing out if this is how you're, if somebody's operating, this is the field that you've created for yourself. And this is where you will s remain with that. When there, yes, there is something beyond that, that the, beyond that, you know, possibilities beyond that. And just bringing that to one's attention. You, hey, it's your journey. You can do whatever the heck you want to do with it. Yeah. That, that, so, that's the truth of it. Speaking yeah, of that's journey, actually... we're coming to the end of the uh, first yep. hour here. We're going to talk a little bit more about the wary traveler on the human journey in the second hour. But before we go, Sonia, can you just tell people what you're going to be up to in the next couple of weeks? I know you have a series of workshops coming up and uh, let people know this is what we're going to cover in the next uh, in the next segment. So join us on Patreon. But Sonia, let people know where they can find your work and what's going on with you for the next little bit. Oh, okay. Um, am I going to need to like write down exactly what I <laughs> 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 No, uh, you need an itinerary, Sonia. Uh, uh, and can you shape it? Can you shape it so that our listeners? <laughs> yes, yeah, so our, our listeners are very, very fussy about how you shape this information. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, okay, so what am I doing? Um, 
I have, uh, well, the, the monthly expansion zone uh, portal, which is really great. We, you know, we meet once a month and we've had some really amazing talks. So I, I just encourage people to go to the website. It's a members only um, platform and uh, we, we dive into some really edgy information. If somebody's really ready to go edgy, you aren't going to hear a no, you're not going to hear about guides and your, and your gurus and you're not going to hear about any of that. So if you want to hear that, then this is not for you. <laughs> so let me just say that. And then, <laughs> and then I do the free monthly um, teleconference. It's Reality Wednesday, the first Wednesday of every month. Um, and I'm doing another workshop in Los Angeles called, it's, well, Becoming the Master from Where You Stand. And that's April 13th. And it's actually sort of a continuation of the super consciousness paradigm um, workshop that I did in Los Angeles. Uh, when was that? In January? It was, it, it was, yeah, it was in January. Yeah. And uh, this is going to be a series of, of workshops. And I highly recommend, I was at the first one. I will probably be at several of these. And so it would be lovely to meet any of you people. And surprise, well, not surprisingly, if you know Sonia, but since she's not interested in contact in the desert, if you're actually interested in space travel, the gong meditation part <laughs> oh, of man. Sonia's oh, workshops. Oh God, it is awesome. Yes. Th like that collapses both space and time and you are just gone. So, yeah. you know, if you're interested in space travel, more likely to have it at this <laughs> in the desert. Yeah. It was really, really good. Yeah. And yeah. The gong meditation is different than anything I would ever have imagined. Like it yeah. is complete c traveling through your own consciousness, which feels like intergalactic travel. So it's quite it, amazing. There you go. And it's right, it, it, that's yeah. what it is right there. That space it's, it's, is out there. It's inside, it's inside you. Inside you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, Sonia Just Yeah. Yeah. More coming up on the uh, patron side with Sonia Barrett. For those of you who are subscribed, you'll get the feed. And for those of you who aren't, why not? Uh, Patreon.com forward slash off planet media. Join us. There's good stuff there and more to come. We'll see more you on the other come. side. We will do it. This is off planet radio.